imagine a second ago there are maybe 7.5 billion people on earth and this minute this second a baby was born that baby is the change and that is plus one to 7.5 billion that's already there so you are the change and it's that deep and it's that simple i feel like everyone is a change in a way if if it's not in the actual physicality then it's something else another step that you take now or another look that you look around your room or around wherever you are that is the change that you made that is different from what has been there before you know what i mean so you are the change and you can be the change Salam alaikum and welcome to my channel. You know, how do I say salam alaikum? I'll quickly give you this story. Back when I was in Nigeria, I went to private Muslim school in Nigeria, like Reverend Azaruddin. And Azaruddin, every morning, you know those kind of things that you have in in school, in school, like your seniors assigned you, who will sweep the entire compound of the school, those people that will fetch water, and all those kind of stuff. Or sometimes you'll be doing assignments. But anyways, most of the time we are just doing our assignment like so assembly is at 7 30 a.m and <laughs> student of course we are still copying each other's notes at um, 7 o'clock 7 15 a.m so you now see like people will be coming to class like my classmates will be coming to class and you will hear alaykum, 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 alaykum. like uh, to the point that one time i think maybe a teacher was there or maybe one of the students was saying that ah, ah it's not alaykum. It's salam alaikum. Like I swear to God, this thing went for so long. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Like, are you kidding me? But anyway, this thing went on for so long. Like salam alaikum, salam alaikum. This kind of habit become automatic, and sometimes I feel like, am I saying the right one? Like salam alaikum. So when I salam alaikum, salam. Like it's so fast when you say it. Then I say it's well, salam alaikum, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Calm down. It's salam alaikum, not salam alaikum. We are no longer in Nigeria and definitely not in high school anymore. But anyway, that was when I was in, mostly when I was in junior high school, like JSS 30, you know, JSS, all these years now. I want to you some. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, so You know what? It's a good thing that I'm actually doing this. As you can see, if you, if you notice my environment, I'm in a new place. I'm just in an outing, a travel, if you want to call it. Let me tell you something. Content creating is not easy. For some of us that just want to sit down and not um, bother ourselves with anything, with any kind of work, especially with like, editing, ah, planning this thing, and then like having the energy to uh, to do it. It's, well, I say, nobody asks you. Like, I shall nobody ask you. If you don't want to do it, just sit down. Nobody asks you. But if you shall want to talk, eh, you can talk, okay? But I won't talk. I want to become a pro at just being concise and saying what I want to say in 10, 20 minutes, which I will compress to 10, 15 minutes, you know? But sometimes when I start and I don't stop, it, I say, oh, you are doing yourself. But anyways, let's start. This is going to be on romance abroad and, you know, ladies, because I'm a lady, of course, so I got to talk to us ladies. Talk for myself first, but then... Hopefully, if you find one or point useful, you can take it. If it's at the top of your list, put it there. Put it there. I mean, like, as a single lady, as a single Muslim, and please let us put the black there, as a single Muslim black that is in her late 30s. <laughs> did, did I want to say late 30s? Anyways, okay. Inshallah, we'll get there. We'll get there, but hopefully by then we'll have pop two kids or and a husband. Inshallah, in good health, of course. But anyways, as a Muslim, a Muslim black living in the Western world, you know, romance is hard for us. When I put all the factors that implicate or affect us as a black Muslim woman, be like, say, sorry, like you are really um, enduring. As they say, find a malu sirisra, in a malu sirisra. I'm not a scholar. <laughs> Don't come and attack me. But anyways, as a Muslim black living in the diaspora in her late 30s, 
you be like, see, I'm in my late thirties. I'm not in my late thirties, but inshallah, we we'll get there. I don't know why late thirties just coming, but anyways, um, in her late twenties. I mean, I'm not going to downplay it. You become sad. Why is this happening? How is it happening? And all those kind of stuff. And you know, I've caught myself a couple of times being not depressed, but sad about it. But I would say that when you catch yourself in that kind of situation, and even if you're not black, but when you catch yourself in that kind of um, sentiments, I would say you can read Ayat al Kursil, you read any Ayah in the Quran, because they said that the Quran is also the care. So read any ayah like the accent grant. That's usually what I do when I catch myself in that kind of sentiment. Being sad in that kind of situation, it's valid. But you also want to check yourself and not be too sad to the point of depression. When I catch myself in that emotional state, I pray. Either by reading the surah in the Quran or just doing your askar and do your morning and evening askar too. But at the same time, I feel blessed to be in the situation. I mean, I have friends that have gotten married, that have children now. And you can say, you can testify and you can confirm that even in that situation, in a world that you obviously dream for yourself but you don't have, there is also struggles there there's also heartbreaks there's also you know and so on and so forth and everyone is just dealing in different kind of struggles if you know what i mean and of course if you want to look at the other space other fence as greener than your side they have someone that's supporting them that's giving them emotional support or they have children that's you with know, surrounding them and all those kind of stuff you can say that but at the same time there are also challenges that comes with that and who knows maybe even if you are in this situation maybe you will feel terrible i mean i don't pray for you to fail but who knows maybe it won't go as planned or as good as you are seeing it the notion is that you should compile a list you should compile a list of what you want in a romantic partner most of the time people will say personality religion if they are on teen, if they are praying five times a day and da 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 that those are the key aspects that you want them to be on the top of your list let's really be honest with each other because i bet that many of us we have physical appearance money somewhere at the top of your list my point is that if really finances and beauty or physical appearance is at the top of your list put it there don't deny that feeling just because people are saying that personality is good you want to make sure that they are top notch like their din is top notch prayer is top notch don't get me wrong this is valid they should be there but personally you got to check yourself you have to evaluate too like if physical appearance is really at the top of your list and you try to bring it down say maybe the physical appearance at the first or second on your list and you really try to take advice be like i actually want to drop this physical appearance so I'm like maybe number eight or seven or to be fair let's say five drop it to the middle and you can't or you are struggling to just leave it at the top you can maybe put comma and <laughs> put other list there you know what i mean i, I tried making some list and I, I think i only got to like four or fifth item or maybe three even i don't know but then i was like you know what i'm not going to barge myself i'm not going to battle myself on like where should i put appearance or where should i put finance i'm not going to bat myself like okay maybe i should put it down at on number 10. i feel like it can be kind of disservice to you and to what you prioritize and even to invalidate your feelings or your important aspect or your important point that is personal to you or that is important to you or that you consider important if you're really struggling then just put it there because <laughs> maybe tomorrow you might even up it to number zero the lists are not constant and the way that you scale them they are not going to be constant i mean human beings are not constant we change we are we change likewise your lists are going to change your priorities are going to change and definitely the way that you scale your important um list
the way you scale them, they will change. If physical attractiveness or finances or all other mundane and inwards that people say that don't really focus on this, if they are really at the top of your list, I guess you can leave it there. But keep in mind that they shouldn't be the entire logo or the entire way that you will structure or that you will choose a partner or a spouse. What I notice is that people will say that but looks are not important. Finances are not important. But let's not lie to ourselves. They are important. They are just, if they make it on the list, they are just as important. Or maybe to a different degree, but they are just as important. So if you struggle to bring down your mundane or the ridiculousness in your, on your list, just leave it there. Keep in mind that that is not all. Eventually, you'll see that maybe and perhaps personality is important. The way that an individual treats the other person above them or below them is important because it tells how they will treat you. Because imagine if you're not um, gorgeous yourself, but you see this woman or this man that is exceptional and they don't look down on you or they don't look down on the next person beside them. You can easily say that, oh, perhaps you won't look down on me too. And all those kind of variations like that. Keep in mind that it's a list and the list might not actually reflect on reality or it might not actually actualize into reality or into your reality in a way to validate your personal sentiment or personal feelings keep it there you can say that you want to go with people's opinion or people's suggestion that you shouldn't put all this mundane stuff on the top of your list but at the same time people's opinions or even majority opinions are not yours so in a way you have to actualize your sentiments and what you're feeling and what you can take in a way find a balance or mind you you might not find the balance but if you can actualize it at a 20 percent rate as in like actualize it as in write the list or write the list over 10 times or 20 times so you know that at least you have tried i hope i make sense there is a reason why some of us shouldn't be a psychologist even though we took psychology classes All I'm saying is that don't discredit you, your feelings or what you consider important based on people's opinions. Eventually, you might also come to the conclusion of what people have said or what you people have noted, which, you know, in all honesty, I will agree that personality is important and it should be at a considerable top of the list. But just as well is all this other mundane stuff that people say, oh, it shouldn't be. But I guess sometimes it would depend on the context of the situation. But we've seen this kind of thing a lot, like the girl is from rich family or the vice versa, you know, star-crossed lovers. How do you do? <laughs> oh my goodness, star-crossed lovers, how do you do? Honestly, I feel like majority of us, or majority of people, whether you're a man or a woman, have been a victim of star-crossed lovers, if not in high school, it's in university, or it's in other arenas of your life. And it happens, you know? It happens. Either you move on with that, or you dwell on it, or whatever. It will this will bring me back to my last point, really. Don't get me wrong. I know the importance of having a person of good personality, that they are kind, that they are nice. Like, honestly, I'll put kind to the top of my list. And even for me, I'll put that no domestic violence, even to the point that I will say, even no domestic violence to the children or my babies. Like, if I carry the baby for nine months, I'm not bringing this baby out for you to come and beat them. No, you are not going to be caning or to be punching or to be disciplined my kids violently because honestly i think it's a val i mean excuse you if i carry the baby for nine months if i had done something to the baby while, while inside me you think you have something to beat or you think you have something to abuse 
So for me, that would be like something on the top of my list. Like not even just me. I'm not bringing or birthing a baby for you to come and abuse. You guess what I'm saying? You know, something like that. And then carry beauty and finance. Being in a good financial state is important. And as they say in today's era, most households are living or thriving and surviving on two incomes both the woman and the man and even sometimes the children have to pitch in and that's the present society present even as a man so does that affect how you view the man or eventually who you choose to be the partner or to be your partner because obviously some men probably prefer women with high income maybe they are doctor or they are lawyers or they are you know someone that's bringing in the door and some men doesn't where do you stand where do you sit mm -hmm. let us know and it's just in a sense and in a way that some people prefer their spouse to be from the same culture the same tribe the same skin tone or others that begs to differ like no, I want to branch out. I want to branch out. Like different skin tone, you know, welcoming all those kind of differences because that is, I guess that's what they, I don't want to say desire. That is what they gravitate to. It's law of nature. Don't come and, don't come and attack me, okay? It's law of nature. It's nature. Embrace nature. But I say, if they make it on the list, it's important just as the rest of what's on your list, but maybe to a different degree. And in a way, you have to figure out how to structure it. Maybe you just want to put them all in a circle and not even label them. But that's what I'm actually getting at. Actualize them in a way. You don't have to put them in like a hierarchy, Abraham, Maslow kind of format. You might put them in a circle, in a star, in a, I don't know, whatever, in a collective kind of place, not like grade them or scale them. And that's the actualization that I'm saying, not Abraham, Maslow, hierarchy. Actualize them in a way, in an essence, but also no. I hope this video turned out good. Honestly, because uh, there is a strange thing about racism, and then there is a strange thing about perceiving racism. If you multiply that with wanting to get into like a romantic relationship, especially, especially when you gravitate towards going further from your immediate surrounding maybe from your skin color uh, or from your tribe and all other variations like that i feel like it can be quite traumatic to us black people maybe let me say black people as much as you can say that it's what allah has destined it's what's gonna happen like the situation is out of your control but at the same time you are human and you're going to react to this as i stated before i'm a muslim i'm black i'm living in the west and i'm unmarried so i'm single i'm in my late 20s like i would say that majority of my friends that i know i could remember when i was in when i was in junior high school who i could remember and i could tell you who sat in front of me who has died who sat in a row beside me like about maybe nine eight rows i could tell you every single person that sits next to me and i could tell you that every one of them is married two has died so like every single one of them and majority of them are in nigeria even those that are not in nigeria that live there are considerable amounts of adult years in Nigeria, say maybe like to like 25, 26, 27, and they're now in Western world, maybe in Europe or whatever. They're also married. So sometimes I ask myself that even if I'm in Nigeria, I probably would have been married. 
I feel like it is like about 60, 70 percent possible that I would have been married if I'm in Nigeria than if I am here in Canada. I could tell you, like honestly, I could tell you every single one of like in my class, every single one. And I'm judging this from when I was in JSS3 because that's like the year that it's not my last year there and it's not my last class day. It's more of the year that I was in close contact with majority of the people that I went to junior high school with. Because by the time I got to senior secondary school, many of the people had left. But at the same time, the people that were in GS3, I could tell you that majority, if not all of themselves, they married. Like all of them. And I thought about it sometimes. I was like, it's only me. Aisha, it's only you. It's only you left to sure there are some males in my class back then that are not married because one of them actually just got married last month so i'm pretty sure there are some men a few of them like that um i'm pretty sure they are there might be they, you know what there are actually i think so don't bring your decisions like why don't you go no like i don't <laughs> do you know when i left nigeria I nigeria like 15 years ago i don't know taboo then so but in my own circle of friends, like the girl that sits on my right is married. My two other friends at my back, they are. Even the one that, the three other ones, the three other rows, they are. And the girl that sits on my front at the left is married. The one that sits in front of me, actually, that's the one that is dead. And, you know, and... If I look at the other row too, I, I see it's like... Ah. This is why I said that it can be quite traumatic. When you look back to those kind of, to those situations and you're like, hmm, it's like a pattern. But I don't say that even if I am in Nigeria, it is possible that I might not even still be married. It is possible. But considering that all of my friends or all of my classmates back then are... I'll say there is a possibility that I, I might also or I could also be married just because of the, uh, I mean, again, the environment that you live, it also shapes your experience. And with that, we'll come back to Canada. So as a black Muslim in Canada or in the Western society, yes, we can say that it's a collective struggle as a black and Muslim in Canada or maybe as a black girl even because i know some of some of my christian friends too that live in the western society they are not and all i could say is like they are beautiful they are smart they are doctors they are lawyers they are nurses they are so what is it and it brings me down to the environment the social um socio aspect of it the systemic aspect of it and if, if you want to factor in racism that affects the experience of the black bodies, you'll be like, say, wow. Like, I was talking to one of my friends one time, you know, when we were talking about this romantic, whatever. I was telling my friend that I saw it when I was in university. Like, you know, we got to, actually, we got to put more effort in this. <laughs> we got to put more effort in this. I was like, I, we got to put more effort in this. Relate to people, talk to people, be nice, be kind, you know. You know, all those kind of stuff. But it's always boiled down to who is going to approach. Who is going to approach a black girl? Here is it. You have on one side the other aspect of the racism and the societal experiences that also affect the black guys, you know, in terms of seeing it as maybe it's <laughs> sometimes it's so annoying to to talk or to even admit this or to even say that this is actually something that hurts or that affects us but it does you have in a way like the should i say the people that are supposed to be your romantic partners or should i say just say in general the black brothers Or should I say that you have also the kind of systemic societal problems or racism that affect the black brothers that sees the 
maybe black um, sisters that's like less or maybe less pretty or less i don't know i guess there's something about wanting to get with the prettiest girl or the hottest girl or the, the girl that fit the societal standard and when you live in the environment that treats the other different or that look down on the other even from like the media sta standards from the society standards from even educational standard you need to reach to the end point you see that it does affect the experience of an individual it does it does so when i see people that are close to me either they are black muslim girls or black christian girls or in any other variations like that i feel for us i do i do and that's the point there and even in that kind of situation where it feels like the odds are stuck against you, then you have the family pressure or the parental pressure that wants you to still in that society and in that struggle, they will refuse anything that is other that their daughter presents to them. Like, no, you are not going to go marry a white man. You are not going to go marry an Asian man or an Arab man or blah, 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 and so on. In that situation that the odd acts stack against you and you still have parents and families and society that saying that, oh, no, don't go and get love over there. You have to stay and wait for that black man to show up. And here you are in your early 30s be like say your egg is going slowly and then eventually you have this same society this same parent coming to you then hey, maybe you should just bring the person say ah since when the parents in a brush you realize and be cautious about or they will be the people that is hindering their children's success, their children's happiness, and their children's um, faith in attaining love and in attaining peace that they so, so easily find during their teenage or young adult life. Maybe I'll just brush on the topic real quick. When you talk about parents viewing this situation like this, they view it as a surface level. Remember, they didn't go to high school with you. They didn't meet your friends. They didn't, they didn't meet different male friends that you have. And so they are seeing it as a surface level like, ah, uh -uh, I was once a child. But they are once a child in your country, like in your birth country, not here. Because if the situation has switched, it will probably be the same. As, like, you got to walk in my shoe. Like, the parent got to walk in the children's shoes. Like, this is reality. You don't only have to convince maybe your in-laws that you are good enough. But then you have to convince your family too that your spouse or whatever you choose is good enough for you. Like, are we... Or are you, am I getting a Nobel Prize? Be empathetic. Be sympathetic. Be, be kind for anyone watching out there. <laughs> for any black Muslim or black girl watching out there. Do you know how they say that it's better? Well, I guess it depends on the level of uh, involvement your family is in your life. Because you see that some family are in their children's life to the point of romance. I'll find it for you. I'll find that for you. I mean, and some some are mediumly involved. I feel like a lot of Nigerian families, they're mediumly involved. Like if you bring the person or if you want us to find you the person, I feel like there is a balance in like Nigerian families like that. But just as well, the kind of battle you have to put up with when you're bringing, when you are involved with someone that a lot might not consider, oh, but why don't you? But I was like, hmm. But mind you, all my talk today are only based on experience, my personal experience, what I've seen, and how I feel about many things. I want to be offended, but I don't think I've said something that would offend someone. But don't be offended if you don't agree to what I said. You don't have to agree. 
one thing that I will highlight and I've said before is the environment that you grew up in. It eventually structure your life, your experience. If racism that black individuals experience in the West can affect how you view yourself and even other people, best and be assured that it will affect your romantic lifestyles as well. And even eventually who you pick I know that I'm highlighting the black individuals and the black Muslim, but honestly, this goes as well for many other young people out there or young immigrants out there. And that's just looking for a way to live a fulfilled life. As much as I know that many people know, it's important to patient, you know, to wait for your time, to be cautious. I know in one video I say that. If you are in your late status and you haven't had your partner, if you've waited for that long, even if you're not in the late status, if you are in your day 25 years old and you've waited for that long to find the right partner for you, you can also wait. If you to stay one more day, if you to stay three more days, or if you stay five more years, you can also. Then just to go for what people say or what, you know, this video is so long, I wonder when I will edit it. But anyways, I hope I've gotten my points across. I hope I have. But if you take away, remember, if it's on your list, no matter how ridiculous it is, I hope it's not dangerous. Put it there. Acknowledge it. Actualize it. It is how you feel. Just because people say it shouldn't, it doesn't mean it shouldn't be on your list. But no. And I think if you know, you are able to make your good, beautiful decisions. We always hope that it's good decisions and it's what takes us to greater height, great happiness. Inshallah. Put God first. Salam alaikum. Did I, did I say that my name is Aisha when I started this video? I don't know. But if I don't, it's Aisha. And I'm signing out. You can watch other videos as well. But thank you for stopping by. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for stopping by. Peace out. Hmm? Are you are we am I getting a Nobel Prize? Am I?